Colin Borchers is a reporter for the Washington Post, and Steve Shigaris is a CBS News senior political ed editor. I want to throw this to you first, Steve. The wall was a major campaign promise, and our latest CBS News polling shows 59% of Americans actually oppose that wall. Is there any sort of a, a difference or a divide here that could make a difference? Uh, absolutely. I mean, keep in mind he's doing this obviously to keep a campaign promise. Now, this executive action is not going to magically build the wall. There's a lot of steps between uh, now uh, and that point. Uh, but at least he can point to uh, some action that he's taking to move toward one of the promises that was a staple of his uh, of his campaign, of, of his every single rally. He brought that up and, and heard uh, his crowds go nuts every time he said build the wall. Uh, so he can point to that. But as you mentioned, the 59 percent and Congress is is going to be involved in helping him get this wall built if it does get built. They're going to have to uh, outlay money uh, initially, even though he says he wants Mexico to pay for it eventually. Congress has to uh, give him the money to start building this uh, right now. Uh, and members of Congress, including Republicans, mem members of Congress, are, are going to be listening to their constituents. Keep in mind one thing. Uh, there is an election in less than two years, and so every member of the House is going to be up again in 2018, uh, and there are uh, 34 members of the Senate that are up in 2018, and they're going to be listening to their constituents about this idea. Uh, and these Republicans, if the majority of people in their districts don't want the wall, there are going to be a lot of hard decisions to make uh, moving forward in terms of, uh, of, of uh, passing a bill that would outlay money to build this wall. So yes, that 59% of the country that's against it does make a difference. Colin, President Obama once famously said that he's going to use his pen and his phone to get his policies through. These executive actions, how much teeth uh, would you say that this has? I mean, is, is this something tangible that will then affect policy in a real way? Well, it does, but of course, the, the sort of perception problem that the press is going to point out over and over again is the potential for inconsistency or the potential for the Trump administration to look uh, like they're doing exactly the thing they railed against during the campaign. I mean, we've heard uh, not only the Trump campaign, but also Republicans for years decrying executive actions by uh, President Obama, working around Congress and really resenting that style of governing. And here is Trump uh, starting off his, his term doing somewhat the same thing. Steve, when you look at the action that he's taken on all these different policy fronts, how does this compare to the Obama administration? I mean, do you see him, uh, now that they have both Congress, both houses of Congress, I mean, will this be put forward or will there be, as Senator Schumer once called, Republicans of conscience who might put some sort of obstacles in the way? Well, that's the big question, right? So a lot of these actions that he's taken in the first few days uh, have been uh, related to promises he made on the campaign, right? So again, he can point to these things and say, I'm starting uh, to move on these things that I promised you uh, when I was campaigning uh, last year. But uh, the question moving forward is, is Congress going to play along? It's something to watch. There are, there are some things I think that you're going to see that Congress, the Republican Congress is going to be uh, on board with, whether it's tax cuts uh, or whether it's uh, some foreign policy ideas. Uh, but then there are going to be other questions that they're going to have uh, on some of the things that he's proposing uh, on trade and other issues where there may be splits and there are going to be a lot of debates. And so it's going to be very interesting to see where the cracks are uh, between the White House and the Republican Congress and how those cracks manifest themselves. It's going to be something we're going to be watching very closely over the coming months. Colin, President Trump has said no matter what front, whether it's the pipelines or immigration, that he wants this to happen quickly. How likely is he to be able to push these through and actually get the funding? You know, Congress controls the purse strings, so will that happen? Some of it depends, of course, on what the specifications of this wall are going to be, right? I mean, we heard during the campaign uh, different heights for this wall. Uh, at times, he talked about how it didn't necessarily have to span the entirety of the border, perhaps that there are just sort of natural barriers and hills and mountain ranges and that kind of thing. So until you get a real concrete price tag, uh, you know, it's unclear whether the existing money that was appropriated, I think, in 2006 for a border wall will be sufficient. Uh, you know, Trump may very well have to go back to the Congress and say, Actually, we need more money to finish the project, to build uh, the big, beautiful wall that, uh, that he was talking about on the campaign. And if that happens, of course, he can't just do it with a stroke of a pen by himself. And Steve, he said that particularly sanctuary cities, he's not going to allow federal funding for this. How likely would that go forward? And is there pushback from these communities that have actually supported this for quite some time? 
Uh, I, you know, I, I, don't, I can't put any odds on it, but I would, uh, I would suggest that there are probably a lot of Republicans who back him on that idea. And so, again, it's going to be worth uh, paying very close attention uh, to these members of Congress, uh, Republicans in Congress, to see uh, where they are on this uh, and how hard they're going to push for these kinds of things. I think if they feel uh, this is something that is not going to hurt them politically, and keep that in mind uh, as we get closer to the election, these are issues that they're going to weigh whether they're going to hurt themselves politically. And if it's not, uh, then, or if it's something that's going to benefit them politically, you'll see them go forward with it. Calm all the buzz of all these different executive actions and executive orders the president has taken. What would you say going forward? What's the buzz? What else can we expect around the bend? Well, I think one of the big things that we're all looking at is what is going to happen next with health care, because uh, that is going to be a big legislative push, something that the president probably cannot do a whole lot to change on his own through executive actions. And so I think that that is going to be something to watch very closely. You know, he wants to come in. Obviously, it's his first full week on the job. He wants to make an impact and signal to all those supporters that I intend to keep the promises and look at all the results I'm getting for you right away. But that is another big one. It's one that Congress, uh, congressional Republicans have been wanting to do a course for years and years now and getting some real tangible momentum on that in the first hundred days I think is the big thing to watch. Is there a sense Steve on Capitol Hill of what Republicans are concerned about? We've heard about these false voter fraud allegations that the president believes in that his own press secretary uh, was very careful to say that he didn't believe in. What are Republicans saying about the first few days of this Trump administration? Well, I think there's some frustration that he keeps getting in the way of uh, some of the things he's doing. Keep in mind, uh, anybody who is pro-Trump is pointing to all the accomplishments that he's made the last, the first few days, which is he signed these executive actions, pointing to the promises he made uh, on the campaign trail, uh, and he's actually been a pretty busy guy the first few days. But that's all being uh, swarmed uh, by the fact that he keeps saying these things, uh, and, and the voter fraud issue is is almost uh, the biggest issue that he's faced in the first few days here. Mainly because it gets in the way of whatever successes that he's trying to get out there. I think when you you see politicians, uh, you know their strategy is always let's get uh, let, let's try to keep uh, things on a positive in a positive light. Let's not get in the way of good news. Yet Donald Trump has done this, and he's done this pretty much since he announced his candidacy in 2015. You remember, he announced his candidacy. That should be the news, that he was announcing his candidacy. Yet, how many takeaways do we have from that original speech that turned into controversies? It's, again, what's happening with his, uh, with his, uh, the beginning of his presidency. I think you see Republicans, some of them, are frustrated by it, saying you need to stop talking about these things that don't matter, that aren't really, that are either old news or are false, and let your successes speak for themselves and focus on getting things done. And where are we again, Colin, when it comes to the nominations that the president's trying to push forward? We so far have seen people, the, these nominations go through. Sean Spicer at the beginning of this press conference said that four have gone through this time, this time eight years ago under President Obama. Twelve had gone through. Where are we with those? Yeah, there's no doubt that they're lagging behind where President Obama's nominees were uh, when he took office. But, of course, one of the big differences is that many of the people that Donald Trump are bringing in uh, are not people who have experience in the federal government. So for them, filling out the paperwork, in some cases for the first time, has been more cumbersome. Um, and, of course, you had the, uh, the ethics office complaining that they hadn't had a chance to properly vet all the people as early as they had wanted to. So I think that's part of the holdup as well. Uh, you know, it's not just a matter of playing politics, although, of course, that is some of it. Um, but there are just some very logistical hurdles that weren't cleared early for these people as they were for some of Obama's nominees. And so I think that's something to keep an eye on as well. You know, to the degree that uh, Sean Spicer can get out there every day and sell to the public the idea that Republicans are just obstructing, uh, I think that'll be very effective messaging for the, uh, the White House. The question, I think, is whether Democrats can do a good job of sort of countering that and maybe explaining why it's taking so long. Steve Shigaris and Colin Borchers, thank you both for joining us. Thanks.